Flag1991 has asked, which tag team does Dutch like more, the Ding Dongs or the Hunchbacks? <laughs> Uh, that is a hell of a choice. <laughs> I, I would like, uh, well, I like both of them, actually. I, I'm, I like both of them equally. They're equal to each other. Now, the Ding Dongs. Who were they? They were two not very famous wrestlers. So did you actually, you must have seen the Ding Dongs. I've heard of them. I don't remember them. I you've just remember seen, the name. You've never seen I've the probably Ding-dongs. seen them. I just don't remember them. Hmm. Maybe ding should, dongs. Maybe we should show the ding dongs very briefly. You see, this is what I went through <laughs> in the wrestling business, and people wonder why wrestlers are nuts because being exposed to this all the time, and if you went out there and tried to wrestle, you know, almost to be a legitimate professional wrestler, and then all of a sudden you have gimmicks like the ding dongs and the hunchbacks coming along and you and they were jokes so no wonder and people wondered why wrestlers got on drugs <laughs> maybe this is one of the one of the clues well the bookers probably already were that's why they came yeah the probably the bookers already on drugs <clears throat> hunchbacks never made it to air but the premise was very famously that two wrestlers with hunchbacks because you couldn't pin them because you couldn't get both shoulders to the mat and this is Jim Hurd su- yep. suggestion where oh, that, apparently well, submissions yeah. don't don't exist in this yes. world. I, I remember that we never saw the hunchbacks because first of all, where are you going to find them? Mm. <laughs> Wouldn't you have to pay to find a hunchback who could actually wrestle ju- just a little bit? And it's, it's it becomes a, a side circus then. Now, I'm going to give you some of Jim Hurd's worst ever characters to sort of finish us off on this podcast. So, the Ding Dongs, of course, that we mentioned. In fact, before we even mention I've got one before. The Candy Man. Do you remember who the Candy Man was? I remember the name. Who was he? Brad Ray- Armstrong. Oh, God. I do remember that now. And Brett was saying, what the hell? Because Brett was great. I mean, they actually took a talented guy and saddled him with a gimmick that actually hurt him and hurt the company. Mm -hmm. So the idea was that he would hand out sweets to children like a pedophile and then would uh, wrestle. I mean, that's just like you basically, so you're taking sweets from a stranger. He would hand out. I, I don't remember the. I thought he was like a. I don't know. I don't know. Just like indiscriminate grooming of like the children around ringside. It seemed like it was a weird one. Uh, we've talked about the ding dong dongs, the orange clad sort of clowns who they rang a ship's bell during the entirety of the match, <clears throat> which would make you either deaf or wish you were deaf. Ah, uh, which is about it. Here's one you'll probably remember: Big Josh, Matt Baum. I remember him. Yeah. I he, worked with him. He was a lumberjack who came to the ring with dancing bears. I don't remember. Did he have a bear with him? At one point, he, he brought two bears out with him, yes. I don't remember that. But I do remember working him. And he was he was good, mm. you know. But he was like a lumberjack, you said. And he mm-hmm. was dressed like a lumberjack. Oh, he hated that. He had to put the crap on, and he would get in the ring, and but he was the type that didn't need that because he could get over as Matt Bourne just by the way he looked. He was a, and he was actually pretty talented in the ring, really good. So, and I had a couple of matches with him. It was the good matches. I didn't mind him too bad. Next one is Arachnaman. Spider-Man knockoff that got WCW sued. Instead of like blue and red, it was yellow and red, uh, blue. Yeah. And you know and who, who was that? Brad Armstrong. Again? Yes. God, no wonder he didn't get over. <laughs> this next one, Black Blood. Do you remember this one, The Executioner? Nope, don't remember that. It was Billy Jack Haynes. Uh, his finisher was that he would take off one of the two masks on his head and then he would put one on his victim, his opponent, 
And yeah. then he would execute them by doing like a flying chop onto their neck. Oh yeah, that's that's good for TV. That mm. that that'd get over real quick. Oh, yeah. Billy Jack Haynes. You ever read up on that guy? Here and there. Um, uh, he had a bad temper. So, I remember one guy. He was one of the. He would go to the towns. And he wanted something. He wanted to rib him one day. And I forgot. And it was me and Black Bart. We were talking to him. He said, I'm I'm going to put it on Billy Jack Haynes. And we went, no, don't do that. Because Billy Jack Haynes would have cleaned. I forgot what it was. But it was some kind of rib. It's supposed to, supposed to have been funny. But Billy Jack Haynes wouldn't have found it found any humor in it at all. And he may have just beat the crap out of that guy because he was, he was a little bit, he was a little bit strange. Even back then. Yeah. But he was like, I don't know. He was a little bit off a little bit. Did you know Billy in like Florida or anywhere beforehand? I think he was uh, he was there the last two weeks when I came in, and then he was leaving <laughs> when Dusty took everybody. He was on, and I asked him to stay because he looked great and he was over. That's another one Dusty took when he when he when he left and to leave, and then Dory Funk came in. He didn't stay about a month or two, and and then I came in. With uh, <clears throat> with that being said, any more stories about Billy Jack Haynes going crazy? I mean, you mu- what were the rumours about Billy at the time? Because you must have known not to rib him. Well, I had heard stories that he was in Oregon and he would take, I think, something about guns. He would take guns with him. And I'd have to really rack my brain, but I'd, I've heard some crazy stuff about him. We shall move on to the next are one. You, and... are, are you researching it a little bit? Oh, no. There's, oh. there's probably too much too much to tell you. Oz. The all-powerful Oz. Oz. I don't as, remember Oz. In, yes, you do. As in the Wizard of. Yeah, I remember the Wizard of Oz. But we had an Oz. Kevin Nash. Clad uh, in green. God almighty. Horrible. And then he had a partner one time, and I forgot what that team was called. Oh, the uh, he was it was Al Green. I can't remember the other one, but I, Al Green was his partner. The Master Blasters. Oh my God! And boy, he would get in the dressing room, and he would say this. Oh, he was just starting out too, and he didn't like it. And I don't blame him. And was that a flare deal? I think that's probably a Jim Hurd. It might have even been a Kevin Sullivan thing, but it's probably a probably a Jim Hurd. If it was a Kevin Sullivan thing, they <clears> probably <throat> rib, was trying to rib. <laughs> they, they knew that the life of these certain gimmicks didn't have a long shelf life, and they made just the rib guys to send them out there. Because mm. that was kind of popular back in the, the time. Do, do you know, it may have been a thing because Turner – obviously owned a back catalogue of classic films. And, of course, The Wizard of Oz would have been one of those that I think was under the Turner umbrella, so then maybe they want to do a character based on that. Could have been. How much did Ted Turner have to do with it? I don't think anything. No, day-to-day booking, very little, I imagine. No. <clears throat> Next one. And I had to listen. Oh, yeah. I was having a pretty good day. To you brought all this crap up. You say and that now I'm every thinking, time. You say that every week when I turn up. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was having a good day. But I had I forgotten. <laughs> no, I had forgotten all these gimmicks. Well, <clears throat> here's one you probably won't remember. The yellow dog. Brian Pillman under a mask. It's the same thing as, you know, Texas Dirt or the Midnight Rider or something like that, where it's obviously Brian hey, Pillman. speak with a little bit of reverence about Texas with Dirt. Texas that was- Dirt. From Dirt, Texas. From Dirt, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll we'll talk about Texas Dirt. That was time. a well thought out gimmick. 
uh, Brian Pillman got in trouble as the yellow dog because he was facing Mark Mero, who was Johnny B. Bad, and into the camera Pillman said, he isn't Johnny B. Bad, I think he's Johnny B. Gay. Yeah. And uh, that got some problems for WCW, who had to make an immediate on-air apology for that one. They, they Even 20-something-odd, 30, 30, years, yeah, yeah. 30, 30 years, years ago, yeah, they yeah. apologized for it. Yeah. I'm going to run through the rest of these. Fair- Stop me if you want to mention anything of these, but there is uh, Norman the Lunatic and Trucker Norm. Uh, I think you faced Norman the Lunatic, in fact, when you were... Uh, I did, and years. horrible, horrible gimmick. <laughs> oh, I was in one. Go on. Uh, the the Desperados. The Desperados we have there, but we're going to be going more in depth on the Desperados. God. <laughs> we, but that was a that, that wasn't an Oli idea. I mean, uh, that wasn't a Jim Hurt idea. That was an Oli idea. No, that was a Dusty idea. Dusty, that was Dusty's idea. And and I this is one of my favorite sayings. It was it was dead. On arrival, because we took three guys, me, Black Bart, and Randy Colley, put us together as three bumbling ass cowboys. They couldn't figure out. We were looking for Stan Hansen. Sometimes Stan Hansen would be in the same dressing room and the same card as we were on, but yet we were so stupid, we couldn't figure that out in a house show. People would say, our Stan Hansen, what do you got to tell him? And we kept wanting to meet. And finally, Stan Hansen had more sense than any of us. Before we could get to the point of finding him, he quit. And he left, thus ending the desperado search for Stan Hansen. We knew where he was. He was in Japan. Should have yeah. had Vanilla be bothered flying to find him. Uh, okay, I, who I, else you got? I promise we'll talk about the Desperados at uh, another point. Just very briefly, Norman the Lunatic. Just explain, the, explain that character to people who don't know it. I don't know it. I mean, he was just a, supposed to be a patient from a mental hospital that got out. And I don't know how they thought that he was going to travel around as a, just a goof and no, no logical thinking went into any of this they took the entertainment value and that hurt the business more than anything else because i don't think they ever recovered from this tell you the truth no. they they got better but <laughs> well uh, but no wrestling fans they have seen it all but you got to have a lot of respect for wrestling fans all the shit that they're given and they're still a fan so my hats off to them. Yeah, uh, Mike Shaw went through four wrestle crap Hall of Fame characters in a row. I, my hats off them. Yeah. Who no, da, no. who 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 was went through what? Mike Shaw, four characters in a row yeah. that were all yep. time god awful. So it went from Norm the Lunatic to Trucker Norm to yep. Friar Ferguson, the wrestling <laughs> monk, who made it. I think <laughs> who made it. I think two TV tapings, and then I think like the Catholic some Catholic body wrote to the WWF and asked them to take the character away. And then yeah. he ended his mainstream career as Bastian Booger. But that was, was that in WCW? That was in WWF too. W- the first yeah. two in WCW and Bastion... then the second two in WWF. And that kind of, kind of, I'm thinking WWF, they actually took that idea and took, took that gimmick up there that bombed. Big time bombed. Mm-hmm. He was he was embarrassed to go out there like that, and he was a guy who was heavily overweight anyway, and they just stuck him out there. Bastion Booger. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got worse for him. I, I feel sorry for him. Really, to tell yeah. you the truth. And God, people would why WWF in 1993 absolutely tanked. Uh, a couple more. I'm going to just read the rest of them out. Uh, the the dynamic dudes of Shane Douglas and Johnny Ace, which bombed that bombed the juicer. That was embarrassing. That and that bombed embarrassingly because they went out there on skateboards and it did, just didn't work. Period. What does Shane say about it? Horrible. Yeah, it basically says two, one of the two worst times of his career. Yep. 
I believe it. Mm -hmm. Do you actually remember seeing the reactions they were getting? Because they weren't meant to be baby faces. I don't remember the reactions, but I remember the people just didn't like it yeah. at all. So <clears throat> we've got the dynamic dudes. We've got the Desperados that we mentioned. The Juicer Art Bar, who was meant to be a, uh, a Beetlejuice ripoff. And then more to the point, they had to fire him immediately when they found out that he'd been convicted of rape in Oregon. And, uh, I, and guess who had to work with him? You? Yep. I went out there. And to tell you the truth, we didn't have a bad match. Art Bar, rape or no rape, was actually a good worker. Mm. He really was. He ended up going to Mexico where they don't give a crap. Did you so, know this at the time when you were wrestling him? Was there any murmurs of this happening? Or that this had happened? I don't I don't I don't think so. I, I really don't. But so I was wrestling a future. This had already happened at Be for Beetlejuice when I wrestled him, right? This, yeah, this when happened the year beforehand. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he, I'm working with a convicted felon. Mm. Hey, I had a lawsuit. He could have tried to rape me. What the hell? You probably weren't his type. I, well, that's not the point. I'm, I'm trying to get a lawsuit here. <laughs> I'm trying to get something I can sue him. Yeah, I wonder if it has the man. statute of limitations. Uh, has it gone? That I, I Can I sue him now? Uh, for two reasons, Putting me probably in harm's not. way? For two reasons, probably not. WCW doesn't exist, and Art Bar didn't do anything illegal to you. All right, uh, we'll finish up this podcast by saying, let's not forget the Black Scorpion, who ended up being Ric Flair. And let's also not forget that Jim Hurd was firing or trying to get rid of all the high-priced talent or cutting them down like the Midnight Express and the Steiner Brothers and the Legion of... D or the Road Warriors and probably everybody else there. Uh, Ric Flair especially. But they were replacing them with like El Gigante and the Night Stalker and the Patriots <laughs> and Van Hammer and a load of other bums. Uh, who would work for a lot cheaper, I imagine, as well. And Jim Hurd's cancelled ideas. I didn't have that match that you were thinking of, but the Spartacus thing that we said before, the Hunchbacks that we said before, the Desperados, because the angle was just cancelled because Stan Hansen left. And, of course, <clears throat> uh, George South told me this one, and we'll finish on this, is that Jim Hurd actually booked, and they actually debuted on a house show, a team, I think, either called the Gangsters, or they were meant to be, like, old-style, you know with a Tommy gun in the violin case kind of gangsters. And at the end of the match or the beginning of the match, I forget, they got the guns out that looked very realistic and started firing them into the crowd. They, they were oh, fake. that would have got over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were fake guns, but somehow they thought that was a good idea to basically fire either fake bullets or just pretend to do it into the crowd. And yeah. Now, since you got me talking about Jim Hurt, how long was he there? 80, I don't know, maybe three years or something. God, way, way too much time. Yeah, that pizza got stale. Let me say one thing about wrestling, and I've said this for years and years and years. You could do everything you want to do to this business. You can expose it. It's been exposed. You can have those horrible gimmicks. They've had those horrible gimmicks. You could have horrible matches. They've had horrible matches. You can't kill this business you can't kill it i mean you can come along and you do that traditional wrestling and have a story it's going to draw a crowd it's always been that way and somebody asked me oh well wrestling it won't exist i said bullshit we've tried to kill it since the time i've been in it and all it did was come back and come back stronger so fans Wrestling is with us till the end of time. It will you will have a, a wrestling ring and some wrestlers get in there and 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 do the dance. And people will go and they will enjoy it. And and I think the smartest thing was it hurt at the time was was Vince admitting that it was that it was prearranged. But people knew that anyway. So it didn't really, you know, I don't, I think it hurt maybe initially a little bit, but then look at it. Look at what WrestleMania does now. They appreciate hard work and a good story. If you can give them that, you're in business to the end of time.